Hi guys, it's Nina from VR Focus. Joined by Kevin Coons. Uh, and we have some exciting 360 cameras here in the background. Kodak has been doing 360 for a while now, but there's some exciting stuff coming out, right? Oh yeah, we got two big innovations this past year. So we got one of them that is a 360 camera that can do 8K res, 30 frames a second, or you can set it to 4K and shoot 60 frames a second. Potentially, if I get my birthday wish, 120 frames a second. And the whole idea behind that is it's better for low light exposure, it's better for film and action in different sports. And it just, uh, it's a really exciting camera because it has three lenses in it. It's the first of its kind, a three lens, 360 camera. It's gonna be an underwater machine too because it's gonna fix any underwater shoot that you have with a dual lens where you get light refraction. You're not gonna have that problem anymore. This sounds incredibly exciting for any filmmakers out there who've been trying to shoot underwater with lots of GoPros. It is a mess, right? And this is just gonna simplify it. It's gonna be a lot easier. I mean, what is the battery life on it? So we don't have an estimate on the battery life, but compared to all the other Kodak PixPro cameras out there, I would guess an hour to an hour and a half. But the benefit of our cameras is that we put the ability where you can tether in a micro SD uh, power cable, and if you just Velcro battery pack under your tripod, you can shoot pretty much infinitely, like with the dual 4K camera. I did a time lapse where it was like six hours, and I was like, I need to go home now, and I, the camera was still running. It was anything? no, no, no. It's, here's the trick: you take the batteries out of the camera you just power it through battery pack. And because you don't have the batteries in there, it helps with the heat dispersion. Not all cameras can work that way. I don't think GoPros works that way, but we're pretty on top of it. I think that's amazing. That's pretty beautiful. And there's another camera on the side of that as well, which is oh, yeah. a little bit unconventional, right? Because totally. you're, you're kind of clipping things together and you can do mm -hmm. different things with it. So yep. what's that? So there's this new camera that we came out with that's multi-use, multi-function. And it basically folds in and can do 4K, 30 frames a second, or you can fold it out and do 180 3D. We don't have an official name for it yet, but I like to call it the butterfly because it sort of is like going through a metamorphosis. And it's also kind of like a butterfly knife, how it like slides out like that. And um, yeah, it's a really amazing camera. It's our first push into 3D or stereoscopic. And the whole idea with doing it in 180 is YouTube and Google have been really pushing forward with 180 3D. And so we said, okay, we're gonna stick with that and see. But you also should be able to tether multiple ones of those units together to get a full 360 3D as well. So when are both cameras roughly coming out? Hopefully in time for my birthday. Which is when? No one knows when your birthday is. Um, November 20th. No, we don't have an official release date yet. Um, the plan is quarter four by the end of the year. Um, and I'm just crossing my fingers because it's such an amazing unit, especially the 8K one. You can pair it with other 8K cameras in the market right now, and most of them are the size of a bowling ball, and ours is the size of a hockey puck. How so heavy is it? Is it heavy? It's very, very lightweight. It's um, you know just a couple of, I, I don't know exact weight, but I would say it weighs less than the dual camera. So I got really excited when I saw it because I do a lot of drone filming in 360. So I'm gonna buy two of these, put one on the top of the drone, one on the bottom, and being able to do that high frame rate, 64K, you'll be able to then fix any stabilization or any wobble that you get. What about sort of the stitching process? Do oh, you yeah. have to do any stitching uh, after you've captured the, the footage? So what I love about Kodak is we have free stitching software and we were one of the first 360 camera companies to offer this, which put pressure on all the other 360 camera companies where they're like, oh crap, Kodak is giving their software <laughs> for free, now we gotta give what it for are we free. Gonna do? And so um, our processing for it is very quick. It almost stitches real time. I think it's maybe like two seconds for every one second. Um, and ideally, you can just plug it directly in your cards and it will do a perfect stitch as long as you're aligning um, far enough away from the stitch line, it's about like a foot or so. And um, with the three lens system, it's gonna improve that stitching where you'll be able to get a lot closer because you have greater field of view. So you've tried them out, you've beta tested them, I suppose? We literally just found out about these two days ago. My hope was to do beta testing during CES, like I did last year with the Orbit, and I lined up a bunch of people like Fire Dancers, friends, and they're like, sorry, non-working unit. And I'm like, no! No! But as soon as I get a working unit, you could be able to see some footage on my YouTube channel. It's Kevin Coons. Um, and also Kodak will be posting it on their YouTube as well. Okay, so how, how are you gonna be testing the camera? So the ways that I like to test the camera are in extreme low light level conditions and I compare it with other low light level cameras. So I would do a test where I'm literally going to put it on top of a Z cam which has four lenses and a much bigger sensor 
and um, see how it compares. Have the a person do some fire dancing or hold the candle up and go around and see how the stitching does, how it stitches that. And um, that's one of my tests. Another test that I do is I do a lot of electric skateboarding. Mm -hmm. So I do a speed stabilization test and I just will take it on a selfie stick and just go 20 miles an hour down the street and see how it handles there when you're moving very quick and have the stitch line like that. And I think the camera is going to do pretty, pretty good based on the sensor, the camera lens type, and all the other innovation that we've built off of in the past three or four years. Well, you're in Las Vegas, right? So you, there's lots of dark areas totally. and light areas I, I wish and people I, with fire, right? So. I, I wish I could have taken it. I went to Circus Olay front row last night. I would love to bust it out and get some shots. Why, did you, why did you do it? Because Kodak, the, God. I know, they got to get on it. But here's the thing. While uh, you know there might not be a working unit yet, they're very on top of timeline and making sure things come out in that sequence. With our Orbit camera, we delay it by like a month or two, but still, it was announced last CES, everyone got one by August. To give you an idea, the 8K camera here, you compare it with other 8K cameras on the market. Tiny. Um, their camera is about the size of a bowling ball. Their camera goes for around 3,500. What do you think ours would be? I mean, come on, we're Kodak, but that's pretty low ball. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. Should okay. I go lower or higher? <laughs> so um, I would say, based on the estimate that I have, and don't quote me, but potentially a thousand or two thousand dollars cheaper than that bowling ball, and you're getting a camera that you can actually take into Tiesto tonight and film at the concert something that you can attach onto a motorcycle helmet. You try and take an Insta360 Pro and put that on someone's neck, they're gonna break their neck. Yeah, so, this, is very, this is very lightweight. Yep. Uh, and I hope that it's very durable if it, if it goes into some extreme places, but if it goes underwater, that's already, uh, that's quite a feat. Exactly. It's and gonna, it doesn't need an extra case around we're it. We're gonna have a waterproof casing for it. Um, ideally, that will come around the same time that it's released. And also because this is just a beta model right now, the hope would be that we would have uh, protective lens caps like on all of our other cameras, yeah. and that way it adds long-term usage and durability. And I'm gonna push for that with the engineers. And let me know if there's anything else you want, and hopefully Santa will put it in your stocking. Well, uh, actually our viewers, if you guys want anything specific, uh, put it in the comment section below, or yes. uh, hit them up. Or go to vrfocus.com and we're just going to add you. And th this is the camera that's going to make a huge difference. It's amazing. I think this is the biggest piece of 360 camera tech that I've seen the whole show. I say this pretty unbiasedly because while I'm with Kodak here for the week, I do freelance filming and beta testing for a number of different camera companies. And I haven't seen anything else that's 8K that's this small. And if you do see something, come back to my booth and I'll give you 50 bucks. Okay. okay? All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for of your course. time. Thank uh, you and head over to uh, obviously find out more about Kodak or if you go to their website mm -hmm. and go to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about virtual reality yeah. and I'll see you there. See you guys later. Bye. Woo.